Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because they do not believe in me. About righteousness because I'm going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. And all that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, as you sent your Holy Spirit upon disciples who are afraid, who are confused, who aren't sure where to go after Jesus ascended into heaven, send your Holy Spirit upon us. Give us visions and dreams of what you want us to do, both in this congregation and in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Every once in a while, I go through uh, one of my drawers at home that has my t-shirts. And uh, every once in a while, I go all the way to the bottom of the drawer, and I find one t-shirt that I've had now for 39 years. Uh, I, I, I pull it up, and it's too small for me to wear again, but I keep it to remind me of something. It reminds me of my graduation day from seminary, and what is written on it is in Greek, and it, is, it says in Greek, um, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, my seminary graduating class was kind of funny and full of the spirit, and they thought well, this would be a nice joke. But in fact, they were an amazing group of people. Uh, they were all pastors, obviously, and went out into the world. One of them became eventually a seminary president. Um, a couple of them became professors in a seminary setting, etc., etc. But all were committed to sharing what God had given them with the world around them. And it was really a joy to be part of that group. I think sometimes about the church and why are we here. Uh, among us, there is a couple that just came to check us out. And uh, I just met them before the service started. And I said, well, what are you looking for? You know, why are you here, right? And I'm not going to tell you what they said. But why do you think we are here as a church? What should be a role? Are we doing the right stuff? Now, of course, as a senior pastor, I think we are, right? But if we don't evaluate, if we don't try to think of, about what is happening and whether we should change things, nothing will change. Um, I'm always finding myself filled with joy when one person gets transformed due to whatever is happening in this congregation. And I hear lots of stories, and often enough I can't share them, 
because they're private and people don't want me to share them with you, but there are every Sunday somebody gets transformed in this church. Two weeks ago, a young man came in, um, tattoos all over. We've seen him before. He'd been in worship before, but he had not been in church for a while. And I was told throughout the sermon he was crying. And at the end of the service, I just happened to say goodbye to him, and he told me where he's at. He said, you know, um, my, my parent and I have been uh, uh, in a fight, and we haven't really seen each other for a long time, but I'm going to go back home now and, and talk to my parent before I go to the Navy and be um, in the Navy for a while. To me, that's, that's what God does, right? That's what the Spirit of God does as we do what we normally do not knowing what God is doing. God speaks to each one of you because that's how the Spirit works. The house next door, for those of you who are members, uh, was part of our vision 2020. Seven years ago, we sat down as a congregation and we said, what is God calling us to do? And one of many things, at least 10 things that we said we should be doing in the next five years was if this house becomes available, we should buy it. Now, all of a sudden, we became aware that the house could be on the market. Now, it's expensive to buy a house, but it was part of our vision. Should we do it? One of our members came forward and said, you know, God has been really good to me. I want to I give $150,000 towards this house as long as the congregation is willing to match that. I do it because I want to. God has been good to me. And then we brought a few leaders together and we said, what do you think? Should we do it? And they said, of course we should. That's been part of our vision. And then we brought the whole congregation together a year ago and said, what should we do? And you all voted, we should do it. See how the spirit works? These are major decisions that somehow God puts in people's hearts and minds a desire to do something that is kind of crazy. Because, you know, we're landlocked. We'll never grow beyond what we have in terms of property. But some people thought, for the sake of the future, it's important for this congregation to have as much green space as possible. Whatever we end up doing with it, we don't know. So the leaders of our congregation said, okay, well, that's not enough. We can go to the congregation and say, let's pay for it. But what is God calling us to do? Why are we here? It's about people, people that are sitting in front of me today. And they have needs and they have desires. They're coming to be touched by God, to be going out into the world and bring that light of God into the world where they are. So it's about people. And so we decided to have a survey that we did a few weeks ago. And the leaders also filled out questionnaires and the staff. And so now we're ready to share all that with you and something that is emerging, and then you're supposed to give us feedback. We're saying the Holy Spirit works through each and every one of you. You heard the reading for today from Acts chapter 2, where, you know, when everybody thought that the disciples filled with the Holy Spirit were drunk, Peter said, oh, no, they're not drunk. This is God's Spirit. These are the days when God promised that God's Spirit will be in each person males and females, young and old, even the slaves, the word slave was used then, male and female, they will have my spirit and they will prophesy, all of them. That means they will speak God's word. That's powerful. Martin Luther said, this is what the priesthood of all believers is all about. Luther was convinced that priests alone are not what God intended to produce. It's everyone is a priest. Every one of you is a priest called by God to act in the world in whatever way God leads you to serve in whatever profession. You are priests in God's kingdom. So we want to continue this process of listening and talking. I remember seven years ago when we were uh, envisioning what the future could look like. One of the most beautiful ideas came from one of our members who said, I know what we should do with the Catherine Narthex. And he had a beautiful vision and drawing what that would look like. 
So we said, yeah, we like that too. So we put it in there. Eventually, we had so many things that people talked about that we agreed it would be great to do if the money is there. Well, as it turned out, we didn't have the money to do everything we wanted. And that beautiful narthex that was so, supposed to cost half a million dollars didn't happen. We said we could only afford to do 40% of our visions and dreams, and that was fine. So, you know, when God gives us visions, it's not just what I think is right or you think is right. It's all of us together figuring out what is God really calling us to do now. And it's not about buildings and it's not about money. It's about people that God wants to touch with God's love, God's unconditional love. People need love. You and I need to be loved unconditionally. And they come to church to experience that. Well, as I think about all this, I want to invite you to attend those four listening sessions. It's really important that you are there, young and older. We need to hear from you. What do you think about what is developing? So there are four sessions planned for Sunday, June 3rd, and I know that's graduation day, but not all of you are involved in graduations and Monday, June 4th. Please take the time to come and sign up. When we think about visions and dreams, we think that God is going to do what we want God to do, right? The good stuff in life. There is an anonymous saying that I'd like to read you, which I like. Now, basically it says, be careful what you pray for, because God may give it to you, but not in the form you expect it. Here's what it says. I asked for wisdom, and God gave me problems to solve. I asked for prosperity, and God gave me brains and strength to work. I asked for courage, and God gave me danger to overcome. I asked for love, and God gave me troubled people to help. I asked for favors, and God gave me opportunities. I received nothing I wanted. I received everything I needed. My prayer has been answered. So I pray, I ask you to pray with me that God would lead us as a congregation in the visioning process. Some of you know what I've said a long time ago when we developed Vision 2020. I'm not going to be with you forever, but this congregation is not about me. It's about you. I said, uh, by 2020, I'm going to be 70, and I should retire by then because, hey, my brain is not as sharp as it used to be. My brother, 77 years old, he's struggling with Alzheimer's. I think I'm going to go on the same path. I think so. So anyways, eventually, this congregation has to think about where are we going to gather? We're all pastors. We're all priests in God's kingdom. And this is our job, right? To gather, to share the love of God with each other, to help each other grow, to help each other be empowered to do the work that you do out there in the world, but also to go out there inviting people to share with them that love of God both here and wherever you are. Pray with me, please. We thank you, gracious God, for the gifts that you've given each and every one of us. You believe that every one of us is important, no matter how young or old we are, whether we are male or female. We are all your children, and we all have your spirit that you've given us when we were baptized. Help us to claim the power you have within us, to use it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.